Flames TV live at the intermission brought to you by Ram Truck, the winner of the Motor Trend Truck of the Year for the third year in a row. Brendan Parker and Matt Stage in Calgary Flames add one more goal in that middle frame, kind of very similar to the first period. In fact, it's on the power play uh, where the Flames do the damage and now have a 2 nothing advantage. Uh, first of all, Matt, uh, maybe just a thought on that second period. We kind of talked about what they did in the first period of the last game and where it went from there. Uh, what did you make of the second here tonight? Yeah, it was a pretty even period. I, I think, you know, the goaltending has been great for both sides. Yeah. Um, obviously, the power play has been the difference in, in both periods. But, uh, yeah, the chances are there. But right now, uh, you know, both goaltenders are, are staying their ground and, and doing a job for their team. And obviously, the Flames uh, are sitting in a good position here uh, going to the third. Let's talk about the power play because uh, the first period, it was the first unit that did the damage. And uh, this time, it's the second unit getting in on the action. But as you've kind of talked about a lot of times, uh, it's good to get everybody involved on the offense just from a confidence standpoint. What did you see on the way that they were able to generate that goal? Yeah, well, it was, it was a great play. I think, you know, I, there's a lot of moving parts usually on the second unit. Um, mm -hmm. The first unit's usually, you know, always the same guys. The second unit, you kind of fill in who, who's going, who's not. And, um, yeah, it's a great play here. As you can see, there's uh, five lefties on the ice for the Flames. So you kind of have three across. Bax makes a good play to manage and manage. Instead of just firing it at the net, it's obviously a set play, and, and he knows that Dubé is going to be ready to, to one-time that shot, and Luch does a good job in front. So, um, yeah, that's the sort of play that you'll see around. It's a set play. It's, it's hard to defend as a penalty killer because you got to kind of drop down on that middle guy, but if Manch can be deceptive in the middle there and make those little plays, uh, you see Sean Man Monahan do that all the time too. Um, you're going to get a lot of point-playing chances like that. Well, and a nice finish there by Dylan Dubé, and I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about him because obviously the opportunity to play on what could be argued as a top uh, unit for this Calgary Flames team, Elias Lindholm and Matthew Kachuk. Um, for him, the confidence to, uh, obviously the power play time helps, but just what you're seeing of a young guy who's kind of evolving into a more offensive role. Yeah, Dubé has been, you know, since playoffs, he's just kind yeah. of, you know, keeps taking steps forward, and um, he, he's getting good opportunity. You know, he's playing with, with Lindholm and Kachuk, and, and he's getting power play time um, ever since the playoffs. So, you know, he's relishing it. He's obviously coming into his own, and, um, you know, it's so important for this team to have a guy like him do that because, uh, you know, they need that depth, and, and um, he's providing it, and uh, we're just going to continue to watch him grow uh, right in front of our eyes here. What does that do uh, in terms of the overall depth in those forward lines, the way you're able to maybe change the matchups with the opposition, something that you said right off the first intermission you're keeping an eye on, but when you have Lindholm and Kachuk, but you also have, you know, Sean and Johnny, but then there's the back of the line, you can't forget about it. How does it uh, change the structure of the lines? It's just, you know, I think we, we're so used used to having a checking line or, you know, the second or third line, or, or we'll call it backlands line. Sure. Yep. Know, the checking line, they'd always play against the other team's top line. Um, and you're not going to see that as much now because Lindholm's very responsible. Um, and you want to give Johnny Monty uh, good zone starts to obviously put them in a good position to, to use their offense because they're very offensive guys. So it just gives them more options. And, and um, you know, Wardle Ward won't have to kind of pick and choose. He'll, he'll be able to roll it more easily. And, and um, it'll be interesting to watch how, how the season goes. Obviously, some teams have two two top lines, 1A, 1B, like the Leafs. So you, you just kind of match up against those guys better. But um, Jeff Ward is not shy to, to even throw Monahan's line against uh, the other team's top line at times. So um, we'll see uh, as the season goes how, how it plays out. But, um, you know, these first few games, you're kind of getting a feel um, for what the other team's bringing, you know, what, what kind of system they're playing, any adjustments they've made from last year. There's no game tape from games this year. This is the, you know, the second, third game for, for, for these guys. So... Um, you, you really, um, you only got so much game film that you can go off of, so you're making adjustments quite quite often in, the, um, in game here. Yeah, and options, none, yeah, at the very least, right? Um, I wanted to, sh you want to, you pointed out a play uh, by Matthew Gachuk. We talk about small things that win hockey games, and um, you know, again, one of those things that maybe you're focused on uh, the work by Dylan Dubé that sets up a chance. But what did you notice in the neutral zone? Well, this is just two guys reading off each other, but but this the start of the shift, you know, they're, they're hemmed in their own end for, for a good 25 seconds. So Lindholm's, um, you know, dog tired and he, he goes to the bench. But, uh, you know, most guys would just chip that in. But Matthew can chuck the confidence he has, and even Dylan Dubé makes a good read here. Instead of just chipping that in, he banks it back to Dubé with speed. You see that a lot in the power play. But, uh, you know, the, the 2D and, and, and the centerman got to get off there. So uh, you got to make sure you make that play clean and, and have the confidence to do it. 
And Matthew Kachuk is not shy to, to make plays like that, and he's smart enough to make those plays, and um, it resulted in a good scoring chance for them there. Well, and that's kind of part of the exciting part of having Dubé on that line, as you said, with speed. I mean, he's got speed to burn and uh, kind of creates a little bit of that uh, that option for them as they go forward to kind of develop that chemistry on that line too. Yeah, I think it's it's such a good fit but just because, you know, obviously Chucky and, and, and Lindholm are such smart players. Yeah. And uh, when you can add a guy with speed on, on the other wing um, that can read the play and is – you know, playing with confidence, it's going to, you know, you're going to gel and, and make things happen. And they've been really, really good for the first two games here. Well, so far in this hockey game, we've seen two five on threes, one for the Canucks and one for the Calgary Flames. Uh, Flames killed one off in the first, uh, Canucks do so in the second. But I uh, wanted to kind of point out uh, one of the things you mentioned on uh, the five on four versus the five on three, the way the Calgary Flames top unit kind of goes about their structure. What do you see here and, and the looks that they're trying to offer? Yeah, it's just little adjustments. And they'll do this on the five on four sometimes, but they have such a good mix of lefty and righty. And obviously we see Anderson up top, the right-handed shot now and Lindholm. But on the five on four here, um, Johnny and Lindholm kind of, you know, they, they fill the seams. They, they call it the flanks and, and they come up and down. They're not in a one-timer spot. They kind of play the half ball and they, they're looking for options. You'll see low plays with, with Matthew Chuck going to the um, to the corner and one touching it to Monty, like on the first goal today. Um, and Monty's kind of the safety valve all over the ice. And then when you go to the five on three here, you'll see they, they go right into a, a setup where they're all one-timer options. So you have Lindholm on his one-timer one side, you have Johnny on his one-timer side, and then you have Anderson, the other righty, um, on his one-timer side. So, you know, the goal is to have Johnny with the puck and he's the guy who can make plays and you got lots of options there. You have Monty with the, the high tip, which he's so good, good at, and Chucky does his thing in front. So it's just kind of adjustments that, that the guys make uh, in game, five on three, five on four, and, and um, you know, that line has a lot of options to do that. Yeah, it's interesting when you lay it out like that. Um, I would just quickly ask you about Jacob Markstrom here because uh, it's probably not going to be too many games we don't talk about him throughout the course of it, but quiet tonight in some ways, and yet he's made some pretty good saves back there when uh, when his team's needed him. Yeah, he's been great. Um, you know, I think it's weird seeing number 25 in net. Yeah, uh, it it's is, a weird yeah. number, but I know he's always worn it, but um, you know, he's been great, and, and he's a big goalie. He's confident. He plays the puck well. Um, and he's, he's starting to find his game, obviously, even playing the puck outside. You know, he's starting to gel with the D. Um, you're hearing the guys talk. You can talk a lot more, a lot easier without the fans. So you're hearing, you know, a lot of communication. And um, he's just been solid. This is what, what the Flames brought him in to do. Um, and, and, you know, I think we're going to see a lot of this for, for the next, uh, what is it, five years? Yeah, that's right. We'll uh, look forward to many of those uh, Markstrom highlight packs for sure. It is kind of funny, though. You can hear everything. The linesman yelling, it was tipped. Uh, the conversation is very, uh, very prevalent when there's no fans <laughs> in the building. That's for sure. Yeah, it, it is. It's kind of, yeah, it brings me back to being on the bench. You, you, for sure. you hear every little little thing on the ice. But um, hey, that's that's an important part of the game, even Absolutely. with fans. The, the communication out there. Yeah, well said. All right, uh, that does it for our coverage here in the intermission. I want to tell you last uh, check out in the Calgary Flames Foundation Remax 5050. Uh, you got eight minutes, at least according to the clock that I can see. Uh, just over two hundred and thirty thousand dollars is the current pot. Winner takes home half of that. And uh, once again, remind you, it's for all home and away games this year. So 56 games, this will be pot number two for somebody to take home at the end of the night. All right, let's get you set now for the third period. We'll be back with the post-game show coming up after the game.